Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to my review of the Steel Wheel Gecko 1505. This is the newest, one of the newest of several varieties of the Gecko 1500 series. This one in D2 steel, coated as you can tell, with this very deep sort of rose colored micarta which is just gorgeous. The black and that deep deep red accent and offset each other so beautifully with that satin hardware and satin colored linings. Uh, it just makes for a really, really attractive knife overall. And yes, I've put it through some good use. And you'll see some of that during the course of this review. Uh, we're going to be rolling that in bit by bit here and there. Also, you're going to see some comparisons against a handful of other knives like I like to do. And I'll just kind of talk about my experience carrying it some of the features, some of the design features, why I like it, etc, etc. And I will also mention that Steel Will did reach out to me and send this knife to me for review. This one right here, as I said before, is about their newest version of the 1500 series. And if I'm not mistaken, it's just barely coming out or it may not even be out by the time I release this review. It's uh, on their website right now. But I don't, not sure if you can order it yet. Maybe you can pre-order it or something like that. But uh, again, if you're interested in the, the Gecko series, then um, you're going to definitely dig this one. I'm looking forward to seeing them at SHOT Show as well because I don't know if I should tell you, but I know they've got a couple new things coming up that are going to be very interesting. So I'm going to find their booth for sure, check them out, and show you what they've got. But let's talk a little bit about the Gecko 1505. Uh, this is a big knife, all right? That's the main thing you're gonna take away from this video. This is a big heavy duty knife that's gonna get hard work done and that's gonna do it comfortably. That is one thing I discovered in the testing uh, with this knife and carrying it, of course, and in doing some of that hard carving into wood and whatnot, I found it to be very comfortable in hand and I the, the sense that I got the feeling that I got from it was that I could do some really hard work with this knife for a long period of time and not really get fatigued or at least not get any blisters and hot spots on my hand because it fills the hand so nicely it's so well contoured and um, it just controls so well and I will also mention that as a bonus the pocket clip here does not create a hot spot not for me anyway. And bearing down and doing that work, I noticed the, hot, the, the pocket clip there, but never felt it sort of digging into my hand or pinching or poking in any way. And I will say that's one uh, small downside to this knife right here. This being the uh, Southern Grind Bad Monkey. You can see that pocket clip right there. It's very short, which is great for carry, but it goes straight up into your palm. So if you're going to do some hard work with it, you might end up feeling that just a little bit right around here. It's not bad. Again, I don't think it's a downside to this, but I will say that this did it a little bit better as far as comfort is concerned. Looking at the construction, we can see how that's all put together. Screws and it's not riveted. You can definitely take this apart and maintain it yourself. You could swap those scales out someday if you felt like you needed to. You've got a great big lanyard hole right at the very bottom of the knife as well as a nice, what looks like, let me zoom in on that, what looks like a pretty good strong point which you could use to bash some bags of ice <laughs> or perhaps somebody's pressure point who's giving you a hard time, maybe even break some glass windows or something like that. And you can see that that is fairly integral to the construction of the knife there. And talking of course about the construction and of course uh, the type of lock that it has, you can see that's a, very much an old fashioned and classic lock back right there. There's nothing new and fancy to it. This is not your cold steel uh, type of triad lock that works like a back lock, but locks up very, very differently. This is just a standard back lock. There's nothing wrong with the standard back lock. Uh, you know what? Spyderco is still putting them on tons of their knives. There's the, the Endura with that back lock on it. It's uh, proven for the most part. It works really well. I don't mind it. Uh, especially when you can get smooth, smooth action uh, from a knife like this with that type of lock. And that's one of the first things I noticed 
in picking this knife up and taking it around and, and carrying it and using it was that super smooth action. And I don't know if I can really properly capture this for you, but that is such a phenomenally smooth opening. Made in Italy, if I didn't already say that. So if you're a fan of sort of the, uh, the quality that you get from that country and uh, that type of manufacturer, you're gonna see that here. Lots of other great knives, as you probably know, uh, made in Italy, and uh, they tend to have a reputation for just really great construction and great workmanship. The jipping here on the top, there, the uh, spine of the blade is, is kind of fine and sharp and locks my thumb in there very nicely. You can see the thumb studs right there, the way they're tapered and terraced. Uh, again, for the type of carry and the type of use that I see this knife prim primarily put into, which is large everyday carry, they work great. They work really good, really well. Um, and another thing I want to point out to you, and I don't know if I can capture this appropriately, but look at those liners. Do you see how rounded those are? How beautifully rounded and... I don't know if they're tumbled to get that rounded finish, to make them all, you know, polished and, and just really nice looking like that, but uh, or if they are sort of polished by hand, in order to get that rounded texture to them, but they just look so nice and offset all the rest of the qualities of the knife so, so well. They don't have those sharp corners, those sort of unfinished um, corners that you see on so many other knives. It's just beautiful. It's really, really well put together. Uh, the linen micarta on it. We talked about that before, but here's a nice closer up, close up look of it. You can kind of see how that, uh, that pattern is laid out and and that color to it is so, so nice. The faceted sculpting on that handle is great. I love it. You can see those angles to that, to that right there. So rather than a continuous sort of sculpt going across there, creating a rounded shape, they decided to go with something more faceted. There's nothing wrong with facets when it creates this kind of comfort and it, it, they work so well. And they just, again, create this uh, this character for the knife and for the handle. It's just beautiful. So, so good. The pocket clip, of course, is reversible. You can bring it over here, but it is not reversible to tip down carry. So if you prefer tip down carry, uh, you cannot uh, switch it to that. The blade length altogether is, let's see, I think it's roughly four inches. 3.94 is the, the data that I have. The overall length, full size length, being a little less than nine, 8.98 inches, and uh, the folded length about 5.04 inches. It's a 6.8 ounce knife, if I didn't tell you that already. That's nearly seven ounces for this. That's a heavy knife. It's a heavy duty knife and a heavy knife. Uh, the PVD is what the coating is on that. I don't know a whole lot about it. I do know that it performed just fine in the testing that I did. Not uh, not disappointed at all in slicing through cardboard and uh, digging into that the wood and carving away at that as I did. It uh, caused no problems and it seems to have held up pretty well. Is that a little nick or you know a little bit of wear in it right there? Perhaps it is. I don't mind because uh, it gives it the the honor of having been worked. Uh, the price on this. I think is going to be in the $200 range. And I can only say that based on the prices of other models, other varieties of the 1500 series Gecko. Um, there, so I don't know exactly what this one is. Once again, because at the time that I'm recording this, it's not even out there. It's not even released. So it's probably going to be somewhere in the $200 range though. And so I would say for the money and for the construction, for the quality of materials, the linen micarta, the D2 steel on that, and uh, the great the great workmanship in this knife, I don't think $200 is a whole lot to ask, actually. Steel Wheel has a tremendous number of other fantastic knives in their, uh, in their lineup, and I really wanted to um, review several of them this year, but the year kind of got away from me and I just didn't have time to take any of them on. Uh, I saw them at SHOT Show and I uh, spoke to them and have been in contact and wanted to take some of their knife for, knives for review. Just couldn't do it, couldn't work them in. 
So once again, I'm excited for SHOT Show 2016 because I know that there's more coming from Steel Will and I'm excited to get first look at it and to show it to some of you guys and perhaps I'll be able to make time in 2016 to take one or two of their knives for review because as far as quality is concerned, as far as the um, sort of my interest in them, man, they are, they are putting out great, great stuff. Really, really interesting stuff. And yeah, I would definitely like to show you some more steel wheel knives in the future. So let's compare it before we go to just a few other great knives in its size category and perhaps in its same um, price category. That is the Southern Grind Knives Bad Monkey at around 260 bucks. So possibly in the same range as the Gecko, maybe a little bit more. Here is the Ken Onion Foresight. I don't remember what that went for when it was on the market, and you can probably still find them. I don't know if you'll find them new. They might be secondary market at this point. Here is the um, Spyderco Endura in v, I'm sorry in ZDP 189, and I think that's around a 90, 100 dollar knife, maybe a little more. Here's the Benchmade Automatic, no, sorry, Ambidextrous Push Button Auto, and 200 plus. I can't remember the exact number. How about the Cold Steel Code 4? This one being the CTS XHP variety of it. And I think that's a 60, 65 ish knife. And we can maybe squeeze one more into view, but not very easily. And that would be the Benchmade McHenry and Williams. And I think that's a 200 plus dollar knife as well, but uh, stacks up very nicely in size, as you can see. So. There you go, guys. There's a lot of other great knives out there, obviously, in the same size category. Um, the characteristics of that Gecko make it very unique, very cool. Uh, what I'm seeing from Steel Will so far, I'm really, really impressed with. I think you would be, too, if you get some of them in hand and, and put them to work. It's a heavy knife to carry around. If you're not carrying a ton of other stuff, it's not a big deal, though. And honestly, in carrying this one as an EDC knife for a while there, for several weeks... I didn't mind it. I actually kind of enjoyed the uh, the size when I was able to pull it out and use it for varying cutting tasks. It is definitely nice to have a big chunk of handle in your hand and get all that kind of control from your large EDC knife. And um, uh, I still probably lean towards the smaller EDC knives, but there's definitely some characteristics to the larger ones and definitely some beautiful uh, design to this Steel Wheel Gecko. I'm Lee Boy Scout, and that's been my review of the Steel Wheel Gecko 1505. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you later. This is called the Gecko. Uh, it's got a micarta handle that's meant to look like uh, kind of like a lizard skin, almost. N690CO steel, uh, lockback lock folder. Uh, extremely smooth, uh, just a piece that's very pretty to look at.